Hi, this is Sarah Lacey for TechCrunch TV, and I'm here with Satish Dharmaraj, who has some exciting news today. We broke news this morning that Cloud.com has been acquired by Citrix, and this has special meaning for you, Satish, because this is your first exit as a venture capitalist, right? That's right. And it was actually the first deal you did, right? It is the first deal I did. You know, in fact, uh, I, I, I know Sheng from, uh, from before when I worked in JavaSoft with him. And I did this deal within the first two weeks of starting as a partner at Redpoint. And so it was like, everyone says, you've got to wait for two years. But I really, really love this guy. And our partners loved him. And we just bet on him pretty much. And uh, it turned out to be a great outcome in two years. Uh huh. So last night when I was breaking the story, um, you know, you quite wisely would not actually answer any of my questions. So now that the news is actually out, I want to ask you, you know, this company seemed to be doing really well and maybe it was a sleeper company we don't hear about all the time, but had a lot of really big clients, was obviously, you know, providing a service people were willing to pay for and like in two years went from this kind of getting its first round of money to having clients like Tata and Zynga and, you know, running these high performance sort of private EC2 like clouds. Why did they sell? <laughs> well, you know, uh, you're absolutely right. You know, this company was uh, definitely one of those companies that was on a tear. Uh, and uh, it, it, to be quite honest, it, well, first, it was a great outcome for everyone. It was a great out outcome for the founders. It was a great outcome for the investors. It was a great outcome for us. But quite honestly, the investors and, and all the board members uh, definitely wanted us to continue uh, operations and continue growing the business because we think that uh, it, had we not sold, we could have built a big independent business. Having said that, you know, uh, all the investors on the board are all, uh, you know, investors who always back entrepreneurs and always trust the entrepreneur's judgment. At the end of the day, the founding team, the CEO and the entrepreneur, they, they know the pulse of the business more than investors and the board does and so when they say that they want to sell then we just sell but we definitely try to encourage them not to sell uh, and uh, you know it was weird being on the other side of the fence because well yeah because the same thing happened with Zimbra I mean, when you were selling Zimbra your investors were like don't sell the company it's still growing we'll we'll give you guys secondaries we'll do whatever and like you were like nope we're selling the company so that's, that's it would have been hypocritical right, you know, for you Long before secretaries came into vogue, you know, Kevin Harvey from Benchmark was offering that and he basically called me today and he said, hey, how does it feel to be on this side? <laughs> but yeah, you know, uh, same thing. I mean, I, I completely understand the entrepreneur's vicious and, you know, we should do whatever. It's their company at the end of the day and we should honor their, their and respect their decisions. And it is a great outcome. I mean, it, it, was, it wasn't like, you know, that it was a, a small outcome. So overall, we're happy with that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mentioned in my post this morning that it's been a pretty good 2011 for Redpoint so far. Um, and what I think is interesting is you guys haven't been in the big high profile IPOs that everyone, you know, is doing post after post after post on. You weren't in LinkedIn, you weren't in Pandora, uh, you're not in Zynga, you're not in Facebook. And yet, you know, you have two companies that have gone public that are worth in the $3 billion range that you have big stakes in. You have uh, you know, a company that sold for four hundred million, company now sold for you know north of two hundred million. I mean, you guys are getting a bunch of returns, but you're doing it in a different way than the firms we write about all the time. Is that just kind of happy accident, or is there any sort of strategy there on the part of uh, our point? Uh, actually, that, that's a good point. Uh, you know, uh, actually, it is a happy accident. We would have loved to be in in Zynga and Twitter and and LinkedIn. Um, not Twitter yet, but <laughs> LinkedIn. Uh, Twitter may be at a lower valuation. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we're extremely happy with the way we've been performing, especially this year. Actually, there were three companies that went public. Responses was the, was the other one uh, that also is public, uh, that we took uh, public this year. And, you know, what we've been doing is continuing to invest in companies that, you know, uh, that uh, have great uh, management teams and uh, provide great value. And what, what we've been successful at is identifying such market opportunities and, uh, and executing on that. Getting into a, a Zynga or a LinkedIn or a Facebook is one of these, you know, one of these things as you keep investing in all these great companies, one of them just tears off and becomes a hundred billion dollar company. But that happens once every, you know, seven or eight years. And so, you know, uh, we're, we're, what we're uh, focusing on 
is not to go and chase after those uh, needle in the haystack deals, although we suspect that while we're doing such deals, uh, you know, one of them might turn out to be these deals. On the other hand, we're investing in companies doing the traditional venture capital thing of investing in companies at great valuations, backing great people in hugely disruptive markets. Like example, when we funded cloud.com, you know, it was like two years ago and before the private cloud thing started, it was the first private cloud company that got funded and, uh, you know, it was just Schengen and idea and, you know, we look at disruptive markets and, and back them. And so that's been really, really uh, uh, beneficial for us. Now, speaking of disruptive markets, you guys have also uh, increased uh, some of your participation in emerging markets, particularly in Brazil. One of your big IPOs was a Chinese company. Um, what, is, what is sort of the red point philosophy on emerging markets now? Because you can't get those big exits, but man, you can lose a lot of money too. Yeah, no, that's, uh, uh, that's very true. Uh, our philosophy in general is to work really closely with uh, local investors um, and uh, because we want to make sure that we identify the right entrepreneurs. Um, and uh, it is really clear in our minds, as is now with uh, many other firms as well, that uh, the explosion in growth in both uh, China and Brazil is, uh, is definitely one to reckon with. And as we see the global economy going on, I mean, the GDP growth of these countries are just it dwarfs uh, the U.S. growth. And so uh, we want to participate in that. You know, the, the Internet is still in its early, early stages in these countries and it's growing like the weed. And so we want to be part of that. But our, our philosophy has generally been to participate alongside uh, great local investors and uh, get into uh, great local deals. Mm -hmm. So really quickly, the last time we talked, I think you were on Ask a VC and you said you were not bullish on India. Bullish on China, Brazil, not your home country? Is that still the no, case? No, it, well, <laughs> no, clearly I'm just I'm trying not. to get you hate mail here. <laughs> no, 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 I know I get, I get tons of that. Uh, clearly, I mean, India with Make My Trip uh, is, 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 is going, uh, you know, is going big. Uh, you know, of the three biggest economies now for tech investing outside of the U.S., I would say China, India, and Brazil. Uh, the only thing that I'm saying is that we're not uh, red point as a firm is, is not don't we don't have any operations in India, and we're not planning to start one because we have one in China, and we don't want to get too defocused with too many things going on. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, and the and the exits in India have just started rolling, and I know that there are a couple of great companies in India in the e-commerce uh, space as well uh, that uh, that are ready to go IPO. I think all of these emerging economies will yield great internet companies, and I think we're we're in a great time both uh, both in the U.S. as well as in the world for tech investing. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, congrats on your first exit, Satish. We hope to see Thank many you. more from you, and uh, we'll talk back with you soon.